Why did I pick this guy? This little video is on picking a single turbo and some of the basic science behind that. Um, the, my particular video will have experience between the GT35R and those bastards, the stock twins. Which, disclaimer, those aren't actually stock twins. Those are shitty JDM knockoff versions that only work with the JDM manifold, which if you bought it on eBay, hypothetically, to replace your stock twins, they're not going to work. Uh, nice little piece of advice there. So, this is a ball bearing single turbo. Um, much prettier, obviously, you know, shines better. But why did I buy it? I bought it because it's going to flow more air, meaning more horsepower, for my stock 93 Mazda RX-7. Pretty cool. What I want to show you, though, is why I selected this specific model. Because, I mean, you'll hear TO4R, TO4Z, GT35R, GT42R, uh, T78, T88. Those are pretty much the most common uh, names that I'll pass around in this video. What it comes down to is efficiency. Now, you might be saying, well, Rob, you know, stock twins, this thing that's ball bearing, so it must be, you know, better than the stock twins. Yeah, you know, there are some technologies that will make that more efficient in a larger range than the stock twins, but that's not what it's all about. This thing is designed with an exhaust housing. This exhaust housing stays the same size the whole time you're running it. That doesn't change. So, what that means is, just like blowing air through a vacuum hose, for that matter, there's, you know, there's only so much flow that's going to go through that hose. And it can either become a restriction or it can be too big. In this case, um, on like a TO4E or um, something small like that, it's too small for the amount of exhaust that the rotary engine outputs in a, in a normal uh, uh, operations. The twins, if you look at this, if you pretended that this was a, a turbocharger, look at how small it is. That is a small-ass turbocharger. And uh, it would definitely produce what's called exhaust back pressure, meaning that the engine is pushing... Oops. <laughs> the engine is pushing really hard on the... Uh, intakes for the turbos, and they can't even get the air out fast enough. That's called exhaust back pressure. Too small of a turbo, yeah, it spools up real quick, but then it, it taps out and it runs out of breath, more or less. So, on the twin turbos here, what you've got is you've got the front turbocharger and the rear turbocharger. The front one spools up first, based on all those solenoids and controls and vacuum hoses. This guy spools up first. He's designed to spool up quickly. Now, the rear one spools up light, later. Now, what you might be seeing is, you, if you ever look at your car, you'll see that there's a blow-off valve called uh, air relief valve or charge relief valve or something like that. And then there's the second one, which I'm getting the terminology. Uh, oh, air bypass valve and charge relief. CRV, A, uh, whatever. Anyway, the one that's in the back actually controls the air being ejected out of the rear turbo before it's ready for use. Now, you're probably saying, well, Rob... Why are we wasting air on the second turbocharger that could be put in the engine? Wrong. The second turbocharger actually has very hot air being created, um, or compressed in that sense, um, before it's ready to be used. There is an efficient area. And an area is a two-dimensional, you know, like a map. Like a, think of like a topographical, top, topogra topographic map where there's a left, right, up, and down area where it's most efficient. So when you're picking the turbocharger that you want to use, you pick out the, what you're looking for. You're saying, you know what, I want it to be this powerful at this RPM. I want it to be this powerful here, uh, produce this much boost. And then you more or less put those points on a map, and you compare the maps for each of these turbochargers to that and find your best goal. So this turbo right here, the GT35R, is an upgrade to stock. Now when I say that, i got to be careful because upgrade, I mean that it spools almost as fast as the stock twin turbochargers, but has more breath, can doesn't run out of air or a hot, you know, it doesn't get hot at a lower um, point in the engine. So really, yeah, you can run the stock twin turbochargers up to 18, 20 psi. Um, it's pretty foolish. Although there are some people who've uh, dynoed cars up to 400 horsepower. It's just not as reliable. If you choose too big of a turbocharger, you're actually uh, <laughs> It's like blowing, I don't know, on a windmill.
where you're, you know, yeah, it's going to work really efficiently, real high end, but that's where people talk about lag, where it takes forever for this little guy to start spinning as fast as you need it. So hopefully that's a little insight into the different size turbochargers and, and why to pick them.